let's look at the security mechanisms uh, which have been adopted for ngn um, the, now we we've studied a lot about uh, ngn architecture and the functional elements the transport stratum the service stratum and the uh, functional entities which are uh, provided at both these strata uh, but uh, uh, once we try to look at it from the security perspective then we would be interested in knowing exactly what is the overall goal of providing security and how does the ngn community look at it so we we look at the security mechanisms from ngn with regards to the definition of the trusted computing base uh, known as the tcb uh, for defining the scope of security then uh, we look at some trust models which are uh, normally considered to provide certain security services then well known mechanisms uh, and then finally uh, we we are going to look at triple a uh provisioning which is most important concern in ngn through the framework so the security in ngn is uh, very important from the uh, security of non ngn architecture uh, primarily because it is an, uh, about ip based networks so um in ip based networks the diversity of devices the heterogeneity is so huge that each device cannot be considered safe Uh, uh and each device cannot be trusted as such uh, so it means that uh, uh this is uh, a concern that uh, every device comes with its own software implementation and it is very hard to determine if it is going to be secure or if it is not going to attack itself uh, so uh, that's one concern the second concern is uh, with the uh, uh, smartphones and newer devices coming in uh, coming to the market the overall intelligence of the user equipment is increasing so it means the role of software is increasing so uh, a user uh, could be a naive uh, like a backhoe operator and could uh, be uh, actually uh, through social engineering falling prey to certain uh, security threats and uh, and attacks uh, so it means the security of uh, uh, ngn is very important and it has to be based on some kind of formal formal model so the uh, trust model which is formally defined here in ngn is actually either single network uh, trust model or peering network trust model uh, single uh, network trust model actually means that the overall concern of security is uh, limited to a single network uh, for even a single network there are different zones which have to be understood and handled individually the first one is the trusted zone trusted zone actually means the the inner uh, most and the completely owned infrastructure of the ngn service provider it actually implies own network elements uh, then uh, there are certain elements which are uh, which may be trusted uh, at the starting time but may become vulnerable uh, because these devices are the devices which are related to the interfacing at the border level with other networks so these are the border gateways which may be trusted but may not be uh, which may be trusted but may be vulnerable uh, at some other point in time then we have untrusted users uh, user equipment and we have the uh, uh, provider 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 controlled and provided equipment uh, for instance a home gateway in uh, like uh, lte and ltea we have the e node b and a uh, home in or b uh, then uh, the other uh, option of the trust model is the peering network trust model uh, where the ngn as a network is connected to another network now is that network also an another ngn network or it's a non ngn network so uh, the, the 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 overall trust or the level of security that can be provided is going to depend upon the physical connection uh, between the uh, ngn network and another ngn network or maybe a non ngn network as a direct connection uh if this direct connection is secured in a building then we can say that well uh, the connection is going to be uh, uh secure and the overall peering of the networks is going to be secured or if it is going to be done through some kind of third party based transit transport network provider then the overall security would be dependent upon how secure that uh, uh, transport provider network is um there's another concern in trust that is the overall business relationship between 
these networks for instance uh, uh, are these service level agreements between these uh, um, networks well defined and uh, 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 um, if they are well defined do they also specify security aspects and if if not then it means then an engine providers have to consider other engine providers as untrustworthy it means all the security measures have to be provided at their end so uh, the, the, this case being the 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 hardest to to cater for uh, then we have certain uh, security mechanisms uh, these security mechanisms actually come from the requirements which are specified in the trust model um, uh, of course the most obvious one is triple a uh, we we've been talking about it uh, earlier as well um, in uh, in uh, ngn uh, providing triple a service is is very mandatory uh, there's it's it's not optional but as far as the data encryption is concerned it is optional because it actually depends on the user requirements the type of data and the type of network through which the traffic is being sent over triple a as an authentication authorization and accounting actually starts from the identification and validation of user uh, through certain through certain um, uh, parameters which are known as a uh, uh, user uh, uh, profile like username password certificate etc the authorization actually means that to what services and to what parts of network is a, is a user entitled the access to uh, then we have uh, uh, the accounting that is actually the metering or the measurement of uh, how many um, uh, seconds minutes or what is the total time elapsed the total volume of data uh, the number of messages number of packets number of transactions um, uh, so this accounting is actually used to keep track of the overall utilization of the network the subscription of the network so that a user can be billed prepaid postpaid whatever and very importantly in addition for capacity planning that is if the number of users are more and the network actually is is uh, under budgeted then it will uh, degrade the service so using these accounting based uh, measurements some uh, some uh, uh, modeling can be done with regards to the uh, load forecasting and the resource uh, planning uh, uh, the uh, overall architecture of aaa is again uh, uh, is is client server based uh, once we say client server it actually means that uh, the request to initiate uh, authentication authorization and accounting would be done by someone and then it would be responded to by someone uh, so triple a server uh, system overall system consists of the clients and the servers um, the, now the servers are actually the ones which are going to authenticate um, uh, authorize and account a particular user so it means a server is connected to a database of uh, user profiles and configuration information an example could be uh, a home subscriber station can uh, uh, home subscriber server can act like a triple a AAA server uh, so the client actually is on the access network side typically it is incorporated either in the user equipment as such or in the access network routers uh, so this uh, the server is centralized and the um, user equipment uh, or user access network based client actually can move from one device to the other and so forth because mobility and portability are very important uh, considerations in ngn uh, if a aaa service is to be provided at the transport stratum so the uh, client and server actually belong to the uh, network attachment control function um, when the uh, transport control function detects a connection request from a user equipment um, it starts acting like a aaa server the aaa client now this aaa client it makes a request and uh, uh, this uh, request request is sent to the aaa server that is on the same uh, uh, nscf at the transport stratum to perform auth authentication and authorization now the aaa server requests the uh, uh, the resource uh, an admission control function rsea for for reservation and allocation of uh, resources uh, so once it it receives a grant or a permit uh, from rsef it notifies the client that you can carry on with connecting the user uh, and its equipment 
this is uh, more or less quite similar at the service stratum as well. When, uh, when a AAA client detects a certain uh, connection request for a certain service, uh, it follows the same procedure which is uh, the, uh, followed for the um, transport control stratum for connectivity. This is the overall architecture. You can see that we have the transport stratum first and then we have the service stratum. At the transport stratum, we have the network attachment control function. We, here we have AAA client and AAA server functions at the same network element. Uh, similarly, we have uh, in the service stratum, we have the client and the server functions incorporated at the service control function. And the request response interaction is actually taking place between these two, probably on the same network element.